And today's guest is none. It's the first of all, she's a 314 day treasure. Okay. You guys know this is a 314 day episode. She is a treasure, a hometown hero, because she's a champion for the community when it comes to cannabis education, policy, and culture. She owns several businesses and not just in the cannabis industry either. She's a diverse queen, okay? She's been featured in Leafly, the St. Louis American, St. Louis Public Radio. She's spoken at several different conferences and today she's speaking with us. And I am so excited and honored to introduce to you all Marnay Madison. Hi. Hi, how are you guys doing? So first of all, you guys know, again, 3148 episode, I got to shout out my sweater, okay? Pro Field Reserve, they gave me exclusive access to their 314 day merch. And I, it's very comfy, it's classic looking, it's cute, it's very St. Louis. It's like a trendy kind of urban St. Louis. So I'm really digging this. Um, and also they're having an event, you guys, on Sunday from two to seven on Cherokee Street. So y'all can cop y'all if y'all like this, get you some more looks at Profield Reserve. And I see Marnay, you repping the the flag. Who are you? What is this? Give us your what is your 314 day look today? So this is our signature tea that um, I made as we were advocating for our dispensary here in Missouri. So we have our city's flag, and then we got the good old cannabis plant in the middle of the floor de lis So I didn't even see that this whole time when we've been talking, I didn't even check that that was a cannabis leaf. <laughs> yeah, so as soon as cannabis got here, I was ready to tag all of my street wear. I love being comfy. I like that sweater that you have on. So I'm definitely gonna be copying that this weekend. So thank you for the plug, girl. Anytime, anytime. So for those of you who do not know or have not heard of Marnay Madison, AKA the Terpene Queen, she, first of all, why do they call you the Terpene Queen? And can you please give the people a proper introduction? Because I feel like you do so much. You're just this multifaceted, wonderful, can a creature. Tell the people who you are, your background, especially as it involves cannabis. Okay, awesome. So yes, as you stated, I go by the queen of terpenes. Um, so I think my terpene name came from my passion and advocation for preserving the terpenes inside of cultivating and growing in this cannabis um, space. It's definitely important to understand that as we dif differentiate uh, between strands and how it responds to our bodies, we understand that the terpene property is the most important part inside of that healing process. And we'll get more to that a little later. But um, yes, I definitely, as you stated, I do wear many, many hats. Um, so as far as cannabis goes, we started, uh, well, the law was passed in 2018. So since uh, November, December of 2018, I have been heavily active inside the progression and representation of minority inclusion. So inside of boots being on the ground and knocking on those doors, I was able to gain a lot of national recogni uh, recognition from that. Um, and then just being true and staying the course, you know, so I'm very happy um, to be doing the things that I do. So um, as far as business development in cannabis, I do anything from helping you write a facility application, even to starting your own ancillary cannabis business, which is ancillary businesses are very important for minorities inside of the industry. Um, so that is one of my focal, po focal points. That's what I focus on. Um, a lot of small businesses want to integrate or even edible makers, they want to figure out how do I get my products in these dispensaries, you know? So I'm here to help. I'm that, um, I'm the networker, I'm the connector um, and I also own the first black telehealth clinic here in St. Louis. So we are a women of color. Yes, we are a women of color owned and operating telehealth clinic, which means that our doctor is a lovely woman of color as well as our patient advocate. 
And our main goal and responsibility is to make sure that you are educated and knowledgeable, even when you step into your doctor's office. It is okay that you consume cannabis. It's legal, it's fine. But what does that mean if you feel like, you know, your doctor isn't receptive to you taking it? You know, so Don, our cannabis advocate, our patient advocate, she's amazing. She can take you to the doctor. She will meet you there. She can advocate for you. And we take on the back end, even after you have your med card, we give you uh, pathways and maps of success. So once you start with one strand, we help you figure out what exactly is for your, not necessarily your exact genetic makeup, but we do help you understand that maybe if you were too sleepy or too hungry that time, that that may not have been a good strand for you. And we give you those scientific reasons as to why. Okay. And we were just kind of touching on that earlier. I was telling Marnay that a friend of mine was asking me about um, CBD because just not a lot of people are even educated about the differences. And I know it's been a huge thing. Not even cops are educated with the differences. So CBD is perfectly legal. So you cannot go, correct me if I'm wrong, you cannot go to prison if you have a gram of CBD in your car, correct? That's correct. Okay, so and I know there's a huge thing where police can't even tell the difference between THC and CBD strands, people still catching cases, but of course we'll get into that later. Um, but on to the strains that are good for you, a friend of mine was asking me why I cut some of my um, marijuana with CBD and I was saying well sometimes it the way that it reacts with my body it takes me to it stimulates me too much. And he was like, oh, you're so, in, you're too in tuned with your body. And I'm like, you should be in tune with your body. And this is, this is the, this is why it's important to have business people like you want to educate us on, hey, there's people out there that can guide you through this process. You're not just supposed to be smoking any and everything. You know, there's the actual, there's, it's a, it's levels. Okay. <laughs> it's a science to this. It's a plant. So it's science. That part. Um, so in addition to helping people start their businesses, um, you also teach grow classes, correct? Yep. Yes. So um, every first and third Sunday, uh, we do grow classes here at our office. We are located at uh, 4220 Duncan Avenue. If you're not familiar, it's the uh, CIC Cortex co-working space. Um, so, yep, every first and third Sunday, we have our four hour courses that are instructed by Elite Home Growers Academy. Um, these guys have been in the industry for 10 plus years in Nevada, California. Um, we're trailblazing in Oklahoma, and they are some of the most reputable cultivators in the country. So yeah, we and we also prorate these uh, classes. I know there's a lot of different institutions and a lot of different like certifications online. And sometimes it can get a little pricey as you're trying to figure out what to do. Um, so I think it's very important to have inexpensive resources to our community. So we do have these classes, $50, and you will walk away yielding some of the best quality cannabis you've ever seen. Perfect. I'm like, I hope as much as I've talked to you already about this, I'm like sitting here taking notes. Like, so I hope y'all taking notes. I think to me, the growing aspect is really huge with legalization because mm -hmm. I, I mean, of course it's convenient to want to go to the dispensary and all that, but I'm very interested in learning how to grow um, my own plants. So make sure y'all check out them grow classes because that's where the money is really. So, so if you are licensed to grow at home, could you then become like a, a distributor to a, a dispensary or anything of the sort? That's a great question. Um, and unfortunately here in Missouri, that's not an option. But as you go into other markets, um, I'll first state to anyone that doesn't know, um, cannabis legislation is different in every single state because you cannot cross state lines that's still federally illegal. So every state has the responsibility of creating their own laws. Um, unfortunately here in Missouri, you cannot be a home cultivator and then sell your product to facilities. 
However, if you go to the right of us in Illinois, you can become a craft grower and grow specifically two dispensaries in a certain mile radius. If you go down below us in Oklahoma, you're able to do the same thing plus more inside of that distribution with facilities. While so, still growing in Missouri, correct? So unfortunately, nope. So you would have to change, you know, your residency and things like that. So. Uh, we are seeing a lot of people, you have to go chase your dream sometimes, and sometimes, you know, that door isn't a no, it's just a not right now or not here, so you have to figure out how to, you know, um, fit your skills and experiences into what you're trying to do and figure out how to do that between legislation in different states. Okay, that's good to know. Y'all hear that? So... For people who aren't interested in growing their own, um, I know there have been talks about Missouri legalizing recreational cannabis in 2020. I know there are three, currently three bills out there. I know that you're working on one, not one of the three that's out there, but well, can you one, talk about the bills that are out there and then talk about what you're, how you're involved and what you're doing as far as recreational 2020 in Missouri? Right, awesome. Yes, yeah, so as you stated, there are actively three bills right now um, that are being pushed throughout the house um, and as well as um, uh, cannabis advocates. Um, so I did help with the house bill that was created by Representative Wiley Price. Um, but as of right now, what we're doing is going back to the drawing board with our advocates and activists who are currently in the industry as far as, you know, Black leaders. And we are working with lawmakers and legislators right now to create that language that does include a successful tier for minorities. I'm not sure if a lot of people were able to follow Amendment 2 of Article 14 of the Missouri Constitution, which is where you can find everything from a patient to facility owner and legal ramifications in Missouri. Um, so basically, if you looked at that uh, law and you see what we're not able to do, um, we've taken the last, you know, two years um, and we've figured out ways to create that language that also um, that also helps inside of um, the demographic. This is a socioeconomic issue, the more that we're looking at, you know, cannabis policy. So um, coming together, cannabis cures all, cannabis will be the healing plant to, you know, bring us all together Together. So yes, we are currently working on um, language for a rec bill um, that will be on the ballot next year. I would definitely make sure that you get as much information that you can, you know, spread along to your followers. And we need all the support that we can get. So, so well, I am, of course, I'm going to spread that information because I do think it's crazy how all of this stuff is happening and how our community specifically knows so little about it. Um, and even me, like someone who's like, oh, I'm involved, or I'm this, like, you know, I write about cannabis culture. There's still so much that I'm like, Marnay, please catch me up. <laughs> please let me know what I should be focusing on, what the people need to know about, what's important. Um, and I guess, aside for how else can people be hands on in making sure that these, the legislation, uh, from our states and at a federal level eventually, but how do we make sure that we're not written out of these policies and written out of the cannabis industry period? Great question. And I know um, it's kind of corny phrase to people, but go vote. That's plain and simple, go vote. There's people out there who want to create bills, legislation and language, but they don't have their community to put them in the seats. Um, and I'm a millennial, I'm a 90s baby, I was born in 91, so I'm actually, right, yes, I am actually hopping off of the train of like, why do I need to participate full force in this government? Because I found something that I'm very passionate about, and honestly, guys, like the more you just go into that circle and you figure out that it starts with policy, and we do not have representation in our capitals, in the House, you know, the, the U.S. Congress, we don't stand a chance, and that goes beyond cannabis, you know, we, every, like, it's, it's compartmentalized, we need sustainability, you know, there's so much that comes into play that we have to get out and vote. 
I agree. I think it's crazy. I was talking to, I don't remember who I was talking to, it was a group of friends. And there is on one side, it's kind of like, oh, well, it's all a game. It's rigged and I don't want to be involved. It's a mess. It's the political, a piece, whatever you want to call it. But on the other side of that, it's like, okay, well, if you are, we're both, we're spiritual people. Everyone who follows this podcast knows it's a spiritual podcast. Okay. Um, there is you can be a spiritual person. You can feel how you feel and believe what you believe, but there is still this world and there's a game that's being played. And if you, if there's a part of you that's going to exist in this world, you have to play the game. And to me, a lot of times, what that means is understanding politics, understanding policy. Um, and that's just not really something that you can work around, especially when you're trying to pioneer the cannabis industry. So, um, I always say this, but hats off to you for really leading that for our community and in championing championing why it's so important for us to be involved and know what's going on. Um, kind of, okay, so as much as you can then with that, because you talk a lot about uh, being in politics and doing this for the community and you have so much experience in the cannabis industry as such a young woman, as much as you can, can you talk about your experience being a woman and a woman of color in the cannabis industry, what you've learned, how you've grown? Rota Tuta. <laughs> right, listen, that, that's a lot to just um, decompress right now. As much as you can give us. <laughs> Right. I'll first start off by saying, um, I mean, I obviously don't look like this 24 seven. So imagine walking into, you know, um, these events as they first started, you know, um, rolling out um, at the early stages in 2018, late early 2019. Um, being cautious, like knowing that if I changed my hair too much, I was going to have to introduce myself again to everyone in the room, you know, uh, my first cannabis, uh, my first public cannabis event in St. Louis, I was the only black woman there, okay. Um, I was not intimidated because I was bred for this. Um, I had a great extensive professional career. So I was already used to being in a, in a predominantly white male atmosphere. Um, so going in, listening to um, Mocan Trade Association and them really kind of giving their members this blueprint of just what to look for, what to expect, what's coming. And I was just, you know, just, just receiving it all in. I'm just soaking it all up. And once they got done talking, we were at a bar um, down in the Tower Grove. And once everyone got done talking, you know, I kind of go to the side because you feel left out, you know. So I'm on the side, got my little phone acting like, you know, I'm busy. But when I looked up, there was a line of white men lined up to talk to me. And I was just like, oh, wait, wait, okay. So at that moment, I had no clue how much of an accident uh, how much of an asset being a black woman is in cannabis. Um, I will first say that we have to be cautious of our intellectual property. You know, you definitely um, have to stay clear of those that obviously um, use um, different types of predatory advantages because of this cannabis legislation. And depending on what state that you are in, these laws are written for economic distressed communities to have advantages. So at that time, every white man lined up to talk to me knew that they had money, they had land, they had an awesome team, they just didn't have a black person. And I happened to be that one in the room. Um, but from there, I was able to make great connections. I was able to weed out those that weren't good for our community. And from there, I was able to um, create a team of allies and organizations that want to help us. Um, even from there going to the first Cannabis Expo, you know, you're passing out cards, you see them, honestly throw it away as soon as you turn around. Um, you can't be discouraged. You have to understand that like, here we are, you know, our ancestors went through, you know, different um, ramifications and we are still in today's society going through those same system, systematic oppressions. Um, but you have to be strong, you have to be confident and you have to know that it can be done. Um, I will say that, you know, fast forward to now, I know um, majority of the room 
room that I first stepped in on a very professional, personal basis, you know, um, and I still feel the same way about some, but I do feel as though as you learn and get to know and grow with others, you understand that, you know, you guys may not have grew up in, you know, the same neighborhoods, but you share some of the same stories and cannabis has saved hundreds and thousands of lives and we can't you know we can't take that message and um deteriorate from what it what its goal is so i definitely think that we should be smart inside of um our professional endeavors um but also don't be afraid to use you know those resources and allies if they are accessible i love that um what you said about understanding that this plant like actually saves lives and like for some people I for me I started smoking cannabis recreationally like in college my friends were smoking we're smoking like <laughs> and I think I talked to you about this but the semester that I started smoking cannabis I actually made the dean's list and so I'm like okay what is this cannabis stuff about and so years later I start the blog and I really get into like I do some research and I like reading about how cannabis helps people with epilepsy. It helps people that have all these diseases I'd never even thought or heard about, um, literally saving people's lives and not just, at first I felt kind of vain and weird, like, okay, what's gonna set me apart from just being like a stoner chick or just somebody that just likes to smoke weed. And it's like, it actually, it aside from it even helping people medically it can help people financially in circling back that's why it's such it's so disheartening that we are um at first my bright eyes and bushy tail was like okay maybe maybe they're just not aware maybe they just don't know but when you start talking to people and you start fleshing out ideas and it's like it's not necessarily that they just don't know but some people even as much as they want to help are apprehensive to and it's time out for holiday, you know, cannabis, literally, you can't gatekeep a natural plant that grows out of the ground. That's just, that's why it's tornadoes and earthquakes happening all the time. We trying to monetize mother nature. And she's like, ah, ah. <laughs> Right. No, that's true. And there's something that I wanted to just point out because I heard um, that you said that you were smoking recreationally with your friends. And that is something that when I hear it, I always, you know, do my best to educate. Um, anytime that you consume cannabis, it is a medicinal purpose. Um, there is absolutely nothing recreational. Hey, right. <laughs> <Listen>. <laughs> Um, so there's there's underlying, you know, medical and health conditions that we don't know that our bodies are even going through until the last minute, you know, your mind and your brain is like the last thing to find out that you're sick. Um, so we talk about cannabis being a master regulatory property that goes into your system and balances those imbalances. So even when you were when you were out with your friends and you were smoking, you unknowingly were balancing some type of properties in your body. Now, the strands that you use when you are focusing on a specific element or condition that, you know, furthermore supports that um, progress. So when we talk about, like you said, like epilepsy, um, that is, you know, um, a patient that is that suffers from seizures. Mm -hmm. So finding different types of products that helps with that condition is what an epilepsy patient would, you know, would go to. They wouldn't go into a dispensary and just, you know, buy. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yes. And then you have cancer patients, depending on, you know, what type of cancers, RSO tablets and suppositories, uh, which RSO stands for Rick Simpson oil, which is just like the pioneer who helped to create that extraction in that oil. I mean, it is literally curing cancer. So when we talk about pharmaceutical drugs that your doctor is constantly prescribing to you, that for one, they are canceling each other out. That's the first thing. But for two, and the most important thing is this, every single pharmaceutical drug that your doctor prescribes to you has some type of synthetic root of cannabis in it. 
meaning that they extract a piece of cannabis and then add all these other things to keep you prone to coming to them because the health industry is a gajillion dollars. It runs this country and the world, you know? I didn't so, know there was cannabis ex- extract in a lot of the prescriptions. Everyone, because as I stated before, cannabis is a massive regulatory plant. So the the properties found in this plant can like there's you know there's probably diseases that we haven't heard of you know there's you know there's people suffering from being one percent of something ever known you know and there's a genetic breed of cannabis that they can grow specifically for that ailment that they could take that they could um you know um extract into teas they can turn it into cannabis butter. There's a lot of different ways. And that's how um, the Queen of Terpenes name kind of came as well, because I started creating terpene diets for my patients. Um, I had women who had reproductive health issues. Yes, I started in CBD. So I am um, I am firmly a CBD advocate. Um, and I wanted to also address that as well. So marijuana is classified as, uh, well, I say cannabis sativa L, which is a plant species of cannabis. So a marijuana plant is CBD first. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, it's supposed to be a profound abundance of CBD. What happens is, is that when we stress this plant out, it's defense mechanism to survive even in you know nature when deers or you know rabbits come to it its defense mechanism is to produce and emit thc because think about it what is what does that psychoactive component do to you it could make you sleepy it could unmotivate you it can make you hungry so imagine a deer thinking that it was just a, you know some grass or a leaf and now they're like dizzy and going crazy. They're not gonna go back to that plant. So oh, us humans, <laughs> right? Like Bambi will. Okay? <laughs> um, us humans are actually stressing this plant out and conforming and making THC. The plant's main goal is not to create weed for us. So, but there has there's a terpene entourage to that. So T- CBD plus THC plus terpenes is a full-blown entourage for cannabis. Meaning that if you have a great um, potency, so for me, if you walk into my imaginary dispensary and you're like, what should I buy? I would prescribe you something that has about 30% or more of CBD, 10 to 15% of THC, And then depending on what type of patient you are, and we can get into like different types of, but anxiety is one that we can use because a lot of us suffer from that. Um, You would go to, right, myself, that's how I got here. But um, so you would look at those terpenes that are high inside of relieving anxiety. So then I would go to that specific terpene and then I would say, okay, well, we have five strands of, you know, we got very white which is um, high in limonene, which limonene is something that helps relieve anxiety. So you don't just walk into a dispensary and say, I want that 70%, you know, everyone's looking for this high. (laughs) And it's possible, but what, what is your goal? What's the objective? When I hear a lot of people in my community, we are battling mental health issues, okay? That is the underlining issue for majority of us. I am, I'm a smoker. I started smoking at 14, okay? Don't know why, but you know, I did. So when I got to college and I smoked Blue Dream for the first time, just as you say, as you say, you know, getting on the Dean's list, I was, I had an accounting um, exam the next day and like everything just like jumped off the paper into my head. I had never saw how high, so I didn't know that like, you know, it had already been a correlation. So I get to the test and it was like me reading my textbook. I was like, okay, I know these answers. I've never felt so confident in a test ever. So I was like, I'm gonna smoke when I study. I'm gonna (laughs) smoke before this test. I'm gonna smoke after to congratulate myself. (laughs) 
And um, but from there, I went from 10, you know, uh, not honestly 10 blunts, but a lot of consumption a day. And here I am now, um, I am in a healthier mental state. I am busier than I ever thought I could be. So I don't have the time to smoke. And so you think about that, you think yourself into these mental health you know, spouts sometimes. It's really hard to turn off that channel of, I, you know, the negative, once you're there, you're yeah. there. And oh, uh, my there was so ugly. So like one day I smoked um, some street cannabis and I felt funny. I was moody and I was like, this is this isn't like my normal high. And I started researching on my phone, was like, what makes me high? You know, um, I was sitting in my dorm room, I was at UMSU. And when I uh, got it, so that's some high shit right there. What makes me high? <laughs> I was I was high like, why do I feel this way? Um, and there was actually um, Dr. Sue Sicily. She's one of the top doctors inside the cannabis research. Um, she was in town at Washington University. So I grabbed my hood, my hoodie, and I hopped on the train to Washington University. As I walked in, she was talking about the endocannabinoid system, and to, which is the ECS system. If you ever see that, it's abbreviation. The base word of that is cannabinoid, cannabis, meaning that the same way you have a nervous system, your immune system, you have a endocannabinoid system inside of you that needs some type of cannabinoid, which cannabinoid is CBD also THC, also CBN, CBG, you know, there's several different properties of THC, you know, once you turn it into um, an edible, it's no longer THC. So there's a science to this, and we have to understand, yes, yes, and I know there's probably some people on here, um, I am the 3% that does not respond to the edible consumption of weed, my body does not like to eat weed. So I don't do the cookies and brownies and all that. No, I'm sorry. But it's, is there just no reaction or does your body react like an adverse reaction? Or? So it's no reaction at all. Um, and that's so I'm also um, for those who have kind of done the research. If you're not like if you're not an edible eater, you're kind of not a drinker as well, because there is an enzyme in your liver that you are lacking. So it does not allow you to process and break down those properties fairly. So, hot jams today. Because <laughs> I, I was in college, like, yeah, I'm good on that drink. I'm, I'm, I want a blunt, you know. And I always wonder. So when I learned about the enzymes, and they were like, you know, if you suffer from this, you probably turn down drinks a lot. And I'm like, okay, that makes a lot of sense, you know. Um, and then when I learned about as far as like our serotonin levels when it comes to mental health. Omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids are very important. They have to have an equal balance in order for your brain to be in a complete homeostasis, meaning free of depression, free of anxiety, bipolarism. The reason that we suffer from a lot of this is because most evenings we're sitting in drive-throughs, ordering food for our families and ourselves that have a very low omega-6 um, representation or presence, but a very high omega-3. So they're actually playing on you to keep you at a very wacky state of mind. So in order to balance your serotonin and your dopamine, you need to have, you need to have certain strands that respond to your body and make those levels balance. So that's where those anxiety strands come from, um, which the terpenes are like limonene and myrcene. So limonene and myrcene, if you guys are at a dispensary, those are the strands that you need to get for anxiety. So those are the terpenes, terpenes. that are present in the strands for anxiety. Okay. So like, so if you go into my imaginary dispensary and you're like, I'm looking for um, strands that are high in limonene terpene profiles. So I'm gonna say, oh wow, you know what you you know what you're doing, okay? So I'm gonna walk you over to the case of depending on whatever type of uh, flowers strands that's there, um, and then we're just gonna go over those that are enriched in limonene. Um, so as I stated, like, um, let me see, um, 
Guys, what was the one that I just I had just stated? It was a uh, Barry White. I'm sorry, it's crazy. Oh, okay. That was another terpene. <laughs> because um, I'm working with Barry White right now. So I actually, I will have um, and like aromatherapy anxiety candles to, for sale very soon. Um, so one of those is, um, you know, I'm so anxious. So <laughs> you get too anxious, you light that candle, okay? And you're gonna, your levels will go back balance. You know, you're gonna um, intake those and smell those terpenes from your candle. You can also roll that J and smoke very white as well. And you have, that's that entourage effect. The most terpenes that you have that you're using on a daily basis is very important to, just as you're having a, you know, your health diet regimen, you have to follow that Monday to Monday, you know? Okay, so that makes sense. So it's not, I get why you didn't list specific strains because I'm sure there's a bunch out there, but ones that have limonene and mercenine profiles. Mm -hmm. Did I yeah. say that right? Mercenine? Mercine, mercine. I did a whole article on terpenes, you guys, because also I'm holding myself accountable for not just smoking whatever. And it's been life-changing. But um, so... Blue Dream helps you study anything with limonene and myrcene terpene mm -hmm. profiles helps with anxiety. Yes. Good to know. And um, one of my favorites is Durban Poison for myrcene. Um, and then I also want to just drop a little jewel about terpenes real quick, because I know it sounds like a foreign language to a lot of people who, you know, are just getting into the industry. And I want to make a, um, a good correlation to as, you know, where, where terpenes can be found. So terpenes are literally inside of everything but water. So yes, when you eat a fresh apple, there you go, grapefruit. When you eat a fresh apple or you slice, you know, a lemon, um, limonene is full, well, excuse me, lemons and limes are full of limonene. So if you say, you know what, I am, I want to relieve my anxiety and I want to work on doing that every day, there's ways that you can incorporate fruits, vegetables, flowers. So um, it's, as you're doing, as you're doing and conducting like your self care and self healing, it's important that you that you put cannabis and those regimens inside of that too. So yeah, we can well, definitely educate you on that. What does your because I feel like for someone who does so much and is in so many places and does all these things that you're very chill. And I think that's just part of your personality just overall. But what do you, in addition to cannabis, what do you incorporate into your routine, your self-care routine? Okay, self-care for me, I'm a foodie. So um, you can <laughs> find me at like any of my favorite restaurants when I'm just like deep plugging. Um, but I also do... Um, a lot of, you know, meditations, light therapy. Um, I love, you know, just going into my own little corner. I like working in uh, my spiritual world and realm. So I do deep plug often and get out of the matrix for a while. Um, taking trips, I travel a lot. Never an excuse for me to hop on a plane. Uh, but yes, other than that, I, I also try to make sure that I come back because I'm so used to, you know, just doing my own thing. So now like, oh wait, people need me. So I I have to come back so yes I can't wait to visit someplace where I'm like oh might not come back y'all it's almost that time with vaccines happening and all that and whatnot but okay so who is someone that you want to have a session with like that you want to for me when I think about um I prefer to smoke um, I don't like, I like the ritual of smoking. I like commune, like, you know, the communion that happens just the whole, I feel like all of my friends that I partake with, we have great relationships. We always have deep conversations about ideas, current events, our spirituality, whatnot. But anyway, smoking is just such a ritualistic thing for me. And I'm even kind of selective now about who I partake in that thing with because it's a ritual like I stated but that in mind with that kind of thought process behind it who is someone that you are like I would want to have a session with this person so my answer will always be Snoop Dogg or you <laughs> Where you at? Yes um, I love Snoop Dogg and it was just even before 
cannabis um we just talk about um i'm a i'm a daddy's girl so i grew up with my dad so you know just busting out the rhymes and everything um and just really following this man and him being legendary from you know the music industry into cannabis like how do you like how do you go from you know, Long Beach Uncle Snoop to cooking with Martha Stewart, you know, and I think it's the funniest thing ever. It is like one of us, a fe- one of us is a felon and one of us isn't like, that's just great. You know, <laughs> definitely Martha, you know, so I just love, you know, just his overall story. He's still with the day one, A1, his chick, you know, I just love how family or- oriented he is. I love his podcast. I wish he could smoke me out like that. Uh, <laughs> no, listen, paying attention. <laughs> right, right. Listen, I've been calling him out. I've been knocking on his door. Um, but no, I definitely, and even inside of his investing uh, firm. So he actually has a capitalist investment firm for cannabis. Um, yeah, and, and he was doing it before anyone else was. I know we see a lot of, you know, celebrities and basketball stars now. But we're talking about somebody who's been with the culture since day one, and I definitely respect him a lot. That was a great answer and a great reason. So funny story. <laughs> when he was here for um, oh, what was that um, Riverfront Times Festival? I think it was a Riverfront Times Festival. I'm pretty sure that's why he was here. I uh, he performed and. That was the highest Mm -hmm. I have ever been in my life. The whole crowd was smoke. Me and my ex were with these white guys who bought a freezer Ziploc bag full of joints. And they were like, we bought like two little ones and they were like, oh, we'll match. We like, okay, (laughs) of course we will. Listen, those music festival friends are the best ones you can have, okay? Yes, they have supply thank you uncle snoop i've never actually met you in person maybe one day that'll happen but you got me the highest i've ever been so that's a testament to his legacy in the market um okay my next question is what's your where is your favorite place to smoke slash who has the best weed i know they might not be the same answer but i've heard people say like Australia, not Australia. I've heard their weed is actually very terrible. But um, where did this girl say? She said she likes smoking in Germany, but the weed isn't the best. But like the, I guess the overall experience of cannabis in Germany, Germany was what she was saying. But um, because you're so experienced and cultured, I'd love to know where is your favorite place to smoke. So, I mean, this would probably sound so boring. Um, My favorite place to smoke is in my car, in my driveway. I'm sorry. I'm so mad. You know, I'm not mad at it. Please tell the people why. Because this is is you. This is not you. (laughs) Yes, right. And no, it's because I am, I'm by myself. Like, you get get to shut everything down. Um, And I also haven't, so... The cannabis industry for me, like, you know, just kind of skyrocketed in the the last two years. I haven't been able to really enjoy the oasis, you know. Um, So most of my traveling has been for work. Um, I think Canada was very cool for me. Um, Where I would like to, you know, patronize and smoke would be Amsterdam. Um, That's one place that I have not been able to go to. Germany, child, I'm in Amsterdam. Lord forgive me. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You're good. So, yeah. So, that's like the birthplace, like, for the legislation of cannabis, I'll say, because Africa and, well, so, Rastafarian is where, you know, um, the cannabis culture was born um but yeah so when it comes to like the age um like you know restrictions and being more lenient a lot of people always travel to Amsterdam um and I've everyone says I'm gonna have a great time there they're gonna say they say that I'm gonna love you know the coffee shops and everything so I'm excited for my post-COVID I'll be spending my 30th birthday in Amsterdam so yes this summer is gonna be lit Yes. That? When's your birthday again? If you um, don't tell them the people. <laughs> no, listen, you can send you the address too. So you can send gifts. <laughs> it's um, August 29th. Yes. Okay. 
Virgo. I'm an awesome Virgo. Yes. Virgo, you're a Virgo. Mm-hmm. Beyonce is a Virgo, so you know, I, we love Virgos over here. <laughs> yes, yes. I actually have, I don't have her birthday, but I have the same birthday as Michael Jackson. So that's like my celebrity freaking pop crush forever. You can't say anything bad about MJ or Beyonce. Like she, she's my sister, but I'm not a part of the is it the Bayhive or the Beehive? Don't come yeah, for you me. know it's the Beehive. <laughs> Sorry, just don't come for me. Like, she cool. <laughs> okay, now for the fun three one four day questions. Um, what is your favorite, who is your favorite STL artist, dead or alive? Musical artist. Favorite artist. I'm going to have to go with Nelly and the St. Lunatics, you know, yes, um, yes, we, from the Lou Elby Proud, it was actually like the first music video ever that I've ever been in, you know, so we was down, get that experience, <laughs> yes, we was down on uh, St. Louis Avenue and King's Highway, helping him out when he was first, you know, getting to it, um, but to just see, Nelly now, you know, amongst so many other, you know, celebrities and being like having some of the best, um, you know, um, um, what's it called collection, you know, like his, um, what's it called his, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, you know, all, all of his material, like he, he's a legend, even like from pop to hip hop to rap, you know, to, to be that diverse is dope. Um, as of right now, like up and coming artists, um, I think Mastermind. Mo is for the culture. You gotta yeah. love Mo. <laughs> and that's what I was going to say. Like someone that I see like reaching back and, you know, um, even how he presents his, you know, his art as, a, as an artist mm-hmm. is dope. Um, he definitely comes back to the city. Um, I haven't had a personal, you know, um, introduction to him, but a lot of my friends, you know, know him. And I think that um, they have a lot of great things to say about him and just um, my outside perspective up and coming. He's very dope. I mean, not even up and coming. He's here. Like he's lit. He does huge, huge things. So see that I'm like post COVID when we're, we need to have a nice social distance (laughs) get together. Um, But yeah, Mo is definitely for the culture. I'm also in his video. If you guys check it out, I make, if you blink too fast now, if you blink, you might miss it, but I'm in there nonetheless. <laughs> okay, I feel you. Just let me know exactly what second. I, I got you. Okay, <laughs> what is the, your favorite park in St. Louis? Forest Park is my favorite park. I love, you can find me there on Art Hill on a nice spring day with my blanket, with my J's and my picnic basket. And I'm just soaking up the sun. I'm not exercising, but I'm there. (laughs) I'm usually there exercising. I've only ran the Art Hill like maybe once or twice in my life. Mm -hmm. But yes. Okay. What's your, oh my God, my first, first, what high school did you go to? How could I forget that? (laughs) I was hoping, I was just like, I was hoping you forgot (laughs) that. So um, my, the high school that I attended and graduated from is Sodan International Studies, Ooh, class of 09. Um, yeah, it was, it was great, learned a lot. My dad used to teach there. Oh, really? Before 09. Oh, I was like, Long really? Time ago. <laughs> so, like literally my entire family on both sides graduated from Sodan. Really? And I, Girl, yes. I and, to, they'd probably know my dad then. Like for sure they know my dad. <laughs> like from literally like the 70s on up. I was the last one to walk on out. So like a little family tradition. Yeah. I mean, oh, you're a Madison. I was like, oh yeah, tell me more about how you know everybody. I was like, no. That would uh, be cool. No, I was supposed to go to Metro, but my brothers had already messed it up. So we were in the gifted program. So when I um I sent my, you know, my packet to Metro, they're like, oh, Madison, mm-mm, honey, we can't do anything for you here. <laughs> but no, it was a great experience. Um, I met some great, actually it was a great time of my life because I was introduced to the ROTC program. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that really shaped like, like my character and like, you know, just understanding and um, implementing a lot of like life skills excuse me life skills and like tactics and stuff so yeah 
I feel like we're the same age and you've done all these things and I'm like, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to be like, so it's funny, Ludacris, he's a Virgo. I don't know if you just saw his, their post or whatever, but apparently he just graduated from aviation school. Oh, I did see that, I did see that. Yeah, so I actually wanted to be in aerospace science. Like I wanted to go to the airports and everything. Like I was a squadron commander, color guard commander. Like I was all in it. And my mom was like, please don't go. And I was like, okay, so I got to go to college. Um, I still want to go to the air force and you might hit me up in three months. I was like, girl, I didn't enlist it in the air force. I was like, too, I feel like the one thing that I just really love about you and all the conversations that we've had, it's like, anytime you've had like a profound idea or you've wanted to do something or you've been interested you don't it's like you would not ignore the resistance because I don't know what your process is but you just go for it you're like oh I'm gonna do this oh okay this is what is this I'm gonna do this this is how it's gonna get done and yep. a lot of people have that so I really love that about you like anytime you tell me a story it's not just like oh I thought about it. it's like oh I thought about then I did like immediately I did this <laughs> I love that about you my name um okay just a few more 314 day questions um what is uh, your favorite st louis club dead or alive um st louis club see i wasn't really a clubber i wasn't either <laughs> okay like we can't smoke no no so um and then i had strict parents too so like most of my friends had already did everything. So when I was able to do it, they're like, oh, we are like, okay, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, um, club, dead or alive. I don't know. I, I, you know, and just for the culture, I'm going to say the law. I guess everybody missed the law. <laughs> I forgot about the law. So you just said that. <laughs> yeah. Because so, I was too young for like the way in the back. What's that called? The casino or whatever. But it's open now and I still haven't been. <laughs> we, oh my God. First of all, y'all don't clown my 314 day episode. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> there are different 314. St. Louis is not a monolith. Okay. There are lots of us out here. Okay. <laughs> This is stoner section of 314 a day. Can I get a witness? Yes, yes. What is uh, your favorite St. Louis cuisine? Hmm. So St. Louis cuisine, I mean, I'm going to go with the Chinaman because you cannot get this type of Chinaman anywhere else. Um, I've had, I've never tried to get it anywhere else, but if you listen to people who's, you know, moved out of town and stuff, they're like, you coming? Can you bring a box of rice and a vest soda and some emos? And it's like, really? You miss all that stuff? <laughs> oh, you miss all that stuff. Um, I don't like emos. Um, and, but I no. used I used to, you know, um, so I just think that like as the recipes change, but yes, um, any Chinaman order you a St. Paul, um, get you some chicken fried rice and some crab ragu. You gotta go to China King though. They got the good crab ragu. China King does have good fried rice. I also love, I haven't been there in so long off grand. Um, like, so they got like seven locations now, they're taking over. Well, who? China King. Oh, I thought you were talking about, I think it's called Bing Lao. The place I like to go to. That place on West Florissant? No, is that that? No. It's on Green. It's oh, on it's on Green. Green. I think it's Green and St. Louis Avenue. Bridge or something. Yeah, it's over there. I see that. Yeah. Mm -mm. But now, so I live south. So now I go to Lefties all the time. Black owned, but still St. Louis style fried rice. Um, and I Yes, girl. Congratulations on y'all. One year. Keep going. <laughs> yes. yes, I love them. And they're always so nice and friendly every time I go in there. Um, and the food is always really good. I actually had my dad got their um turn me on to their Philly cheesesteak. Okay. I know usually people are like, why would you get a Philly cheesesteak anywhere but Philly? But it was actually pretty good. And the next day I put it in the air fryer, it was even better. So <laughs> Okay. Okay. I definitely think, but real quick for the people that's on on here, if you're looking for some homegrown STL restaurants, though, um, definitely check out Sister Girl Sweets. She's down on Washington and Juanita's Creole uh, Soul Food Kitchen. I think they're like off of like 
Yes, Juanita's is bomb, girl. Get you some Creole soul food. Yes. Um, so I think they're like, it's like Merrimack and Gravoy, but don't quote me because I I suck at the South Side. So just Google it or follow their Facebook page. But yes, these are two. Um, I think I think both of them are under 30, but definitely young restaurant owners who have been, you know, we we've been supporting them and now they, you know, they have their brick and mortars. Definitely continue to support them, St. Louis. Oh my God. Yeah, I hadn't heard of the Creole place. So I definitely gotta hit try that out. Um, and my last question, what is your favorite side? It's obviously not the South side. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to, you're going to get me in trouble because it's, it's really hard. Cause you know, some people like, well, you rep where your grandma lived. Cause you was at the house or, you know, um, but yeah, so I, I'm from, I, I'll mess with the North and the West side. I don't pick sides between them. <laughs> But the West Side will tell you that that's where I'm from. Um, yeah, so I, I'm a West Side writer all day. Um, it's okay. The West Side just does it a little better. But I, my granny was on the North Side, so I had to, you know, couldn't say West Side too loud. So I'm from both sides. It's your heart <laughs> Right. I'm from both sides. It's cool. <laughs> it's 314. We from St. Louis. That's all that matters. Um, yeah. Well, guys, that was it. Those were all the fun questions that I had. I feel like you gave us so much knowledge about cannabis. I'm like myself, I'm going to go back and watch this and take notes because I learned a lot today, Um, especially for people who consume. Um, I hope you learned a lot. Is there anything else that you want to leave with the people? Anything you have coming up? Um, We know you have on the first and third Sundays, your grow classes um but anything else you have coming up there's the golf tournament if you could talk a little bit about that um and then anything else awesome yes so we are having a 420 event but it's on april 17th we will be at um excuse me we will be at a black owned golf course down um in centerville illinois the grand mariah golf course this is a minority cannabis uh golf tournament event there's vendors and sponsorship opportunities still available. So we are highlighting all types of cannabis and ancillary companies. And this is in Illinois, which is a recreational state, meaning there will be a lot of weed, there will be a lot of fun, a lot of food, a lot of food with weed in it, a lot of people who bring weed with them to share, a lot of people who love weed. So if you like weed and you don't have anything to do on April 17th, um, it starts at 10 a.m. and it ends at 10 p.m. Yes, there it is. You can see it. So also we do have seats available for dinner. So if you are interested in dinner, we will have those tickets being sold uh, very soon here. Um, and the, that food would have the option of um, infused as well. So if you are any type of uh, brand or you sell any type of products, even if it's not um, cannabis related, you can still get a table. You can still sell your products. We'll have crystals there. We got a cool girl that sells crystals. Uh, we have the Creo um, food truck. The Crooked Boot will be there. They're my favorite. I actually follow them around um, St. Louis sometimes during the springtime. The Crooked Boot. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's a Creole uh, food truck. And then uh, we have a lot of the cannabis dispensaries that um, between Illinois, Missouri, and Oklahoma that will be playing as well as sponsoring. So if you know someone who may benefit from you know, being a part of our um, event, reach out to us at Midwest Canada Golf Tournament at gmail.com. Um, but you can also find us on Facebook at First Annual Midwest Canada Golf Tournament. And you can find me on Facebook, Marne Madison. And on Instagram, it's the Queen of Terpenes. And I'll have all that information for you. Um, I do want to state that even if you don't golf, because I don't golf, I will be there to have fun and consume. Um, it's open for everyone. So spectators are free and all the events, food and fun are for the spectators because the golfers will be golfing. So, because I have a lot of people like, well, I don't golf, well, I would come. I'm like, why do you think we have all this other stuff? <laughs> um, 
So you have we there's definitely um think you get you get um a pre roll one pre roll per entry like it's gonna be lit y'all we have a lot of cool people on board to have a great uh day with us so come on out. This sounds like my kind of party. I'm so excited. Well, you guys, that is all we have for you today. Marne, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to drop gems and just kiki with me and share with me what you have going on. Um, again, I really appreciate you as a person and I appreciate what the things that you do for our community in this industry. You are truly a gem and inspiration and um, thank you so much for blessing me with your presence tonight. <laughs> Well, thank you. And I also want to say that you're awesome. Thank you for this platform to be able to talk. Um, I think you are doing some of the most phenomenal work that I've seen in a very long time. So I appreciate you giving people, you know, like me this opportunity. And I look forward to seeing so much more of your content. Yes. And let's smoke a good one for me. And <laughs> we're going to talk a little more about, you know, those strands and everything for you. So. Yes, I'll catch you. Yeah, I'll see you in the grow class. <laughs> okay, see you then. <laughs> All right, thank you, Marnay. Bye. Bye.